God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the orphan. Maintain the right of the lowly and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hands of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk around in the darkness. All of the foundation of the earth are shaken. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in person and vi- or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. We have seen and learned and had some time to think. So finally, we are challenged to act, to bring what we have learned home with us and do something. If not about this issue specifically, then something that would make sure the world is better in some other way. In Arizona, I learned lots of things. One of the most prominent, though, is what I learned from various speakers and from going to Nogales. The people who cross the border have a dream, and for a lot of people, that dream is unreachable. For some people, that may be the case, but the people who reach the desert act on these dreams and risk their lives to make a better place. It never ceases to amaze me how these people are willing to risk everything to go north and start over. I have heard countless stories of the people who cross just to escape the crisis that is happening where they live. They are the bravest people, and their actions speak for themselves. After visiting Arizona, I learned a lot about immigration, culture, and laws. There are so many different views on everything down here. Some people want more border enforcement, while others call for an open border. Volunteer work is crucial to help relieve the pain and suffering brought on by the border situation. But this trip has made me feel like our mission work can only help to treat the symptoms of the problem and that these people will continue to suffer unless the cause of the problem is eliminated. I have no idea how to solve the border issue, but I know that it must begin with the American and Mexican governments discussing and reevaluating our trade and political relationships. Aidan Coleman writes, During my time in Arizona, I've seen a lot of crazy things. We saw the Mexican-American border. We saw illuminated illegal immigrants chained up in federal court. We also saw the USA soccer team make a last second goal in the World Cup. It's been hard during this trip to maintain American pride after seeing all the terrible things that we do every day at the border. Hopefully we can fix our prejudices over time. However, we don't have any more time. We need to take action right now. This week while in Arizona, I learned all about the issues of immigration. Even when the immigrants are traveling through the desert, they continue to have hope. They continue to stay strong for the people they love, but unfortunately, it often ends in death and tragedy. This affects everyone involved, USA, Mexico, family, friends, and even enemies. Vanessa Samuelson writes, During this trip, I learned how I really feel about the issue of immigration. When we left for the trip, I had no real opinion. But now, after watching the movie about the 800-mile wall, being in the desert, picking up trash, and finding a bag of newborn baby diapers, going to court, and seeing the immigrants so confused and unjustly treated, this really made me mad that our country would be so greedy and let so many people get hurt and even die. On the day that we traveled to Mexico, it was 110 degrees. Standing in front of the wall, I started to feel a little woozy. And you all know what comes next. Uh, I did a face plant and fainted completely away. But I don't want that to be the focus, because I was okay, perfectly fine, in fact. 
I awoke to Carolyn Brown, tapping my knee and telling me to get up. Dad, Lee, was next to me, splashing water on my face. The adults were all around me. Matthew Dickinson took my backpack and sat me up, offered me water. I expected that. What I didn't expect was the people in the Gallus to respond. The instant that I fell over, a truck pulled up. Two men, I'm told, lean out the window, horribly concerned. They asked to take me to a hospital. The adults declined politely, but the woman running the shop across the street had already noticed me and dashed over with rubbing alcohol for my face, ice for my neck, and a Coke to replenish my blood sugar. The people in the shop ran back and forth from where I was sitting, talking me through standing and replenishing my energy, leading me back to the shade near their store. A man in a car stopped in front of us and smiled, handed us a Gatorade. I struggled through my lightheadedness to tell them all, Voy a nunca olvidarte, something close to I will never forget you. Sitting in the shade after my head had cleared, it wasn't the fainting that scared me. It was the idea that, somewhere in the desert, somebody else had fainted. And when they woke up, if they woke up, they would not have a Carolyn Brown. Everyone needs a Carolyn Brown. Everyone. I didn't even last an hour. That's why we're down here. That's what needs to change. No one should be in the desert alone, frightened, and without a Carolyn Brown. They shouldn't have to die. They shouldn't have to be alone. They shouldn't even have to cross.